All right, welcome back. It's time hey. for our good news story of the day. Yes. This is good news. I mean, this is really good news. I really, yes. I like, I, these, did you these fix stories your are, hair? Well, I, I mean, when you say fix, I ran into the bathroom to try and put it back to, uh, to my cabeza. All right, listen, this is a, it's a great story. I love that we're doing these good news stories. On April 17th, 25 doctors and nurses arrived in New York City to help out on the front lines. They came to New York. They came to all of the, the front lines there in the middle of the crisis. One of those incredible volunteers is joining us now, Dr. Pavan George. It is so great to meet you and see you and get to know about you. Tell us what made you decide to leave home and go to New York City to help out. Well, you know, I want to thank you really uh, for having me. I mean, I, I, I felt that New York really needed us. And, you know, I grew up about three blocks away from the hospital that I was stationed at. It, it's home to me. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a neurocritical care doctor. Uh, I've been studying the virus from a neurological perspective and as well as a breathing perspective. And I felt that I could help out in the effort. Some of my neurological colleagues and I were discussing that in addition to the breathing problems that people were noticing, COVID also seems to affect the brain and it can also cause seizures and even strokes. I've been reading a lot about that. Young young people in particular seem to be suffering yeah. from strokes, and I, I was fascinated by that. And I did not realize that you that New York is your your hometown. I had no idea. I just for some reason I just read Cleveland Clinic, and that's where my mind went. So welcome home. Um, but it's so generous of you to you know there are people, and we say it all the time, that are just made of stuff that's braver. Uh, if you will. And so when people run into a hot zone of an outbreak uh, and, and and put all of their tools to good use, it is so um, inspiring and humbling to people like us who sit home and just read the news with dread. Um, it must make you feel good to be able to have an impact in a positive way uh, combating this disease. No, absolutely. And I think, I mean, people that are staying at home also, they're, they're really on the front lines too, because you uh, staying at home actually kind of curbsides some of these uh, major outbreaks. I think that's a really important uh, point to uh, really throughout the country um, uh, emphasize. So you prepared yourself, obviously, for what you were going to do. But tell us about those first moments at New York Presbyterian when you arrived, what the scene was like, what, what, what was going on, and how you responded to that. Well, Queens was basically the epicenter of the COVID crisis throughout the United States. I mean, there were a lot of people mm -hmm. uh, that had COVID there, and the hospital pretty much became a COVID hospital by the time we even got there. They were seeing admission mm -hmm. numbers that they'd never seen before. Um, we noticed that doctors and nurses were exhausted when we got there, and that some of them then had even gotten sick themselves. Um, I mean, and really about the virus, it, it, it attacks people in so many different ways. I mean, some people are young. Some people are old, like you were saying. I mean, some people are mild, uh, and some people are really severe. And that's really what makes it scary in the front lines. You don't know if you're going to get this. You don't know if uh, uh, it's going to affect you. Um, and, and people are dying from COVID, and they're dying alone because no one's allowed in any of the hospitals. Uh, and in many of the cases, uh, you know, we're really the last ones to hold their hands and to be with them. I mean, there's FaceTime and stuff like that, but it's really not the same. To me, that's the most heartbreaking part of all of this yeah. is knowing that so many Absolutely. people have um, have uh, passed away from this disease alone. But I think that, um, you know, the hospital workers on the front line, yourself included, really are such a tremendous comfort to the families, knowing that it wasn't just a nameless, faceless stranger there, but somebody that was really um, thoughtful and very, very much uh, involved in, in their care uh, right up to the very end. And, and we thank you so much for being such a, such a source of good news for us in an otherwise uh, time of crushing bad news. Of course. And you're home and you're safe and you're well now, right? Yeah, I mean, so I'm, I'm back in Ohio at this point. I mean, when I first got there, uh, it was a one-way ticket. Um, and depending on how kind of the situation was going to be, wow. it was going to stay as long as necessary. I mean, we were seeing uh, this steadily decrease in admissions, and um, the staffing ratio has mm -hmm. actually started to get a little bit better. Uh, 
Wow. Towards the end of the week, I, I went over it with the ICU physicians there, and they said that um, for the rest of the week, they seemed okay. Um, if we, they need us back, obviously, we can definitely go back. Um, but uh, I'm back now in Ohio. Uh, I'm not back at home, but I'm, I'm quarantined up in a hotel for a little while, taking my temperature daily. I'm trying to make sure that you know I didn't get exposed before I go home to my family. Well, you yeah, know, smart. Thank, Very good. Thank, thank, thank goodness for you and, and those others like you for doing this incredible work. And we really appreciate you not only coming on, but just getting the chance to see you and connect with you and say thank you to you. So take care of yourself. And again, we really appreciate what you did. Thank you so much uh, for having me again. I mean, this is really good. And I want to make a shout out to all my ICU uh, people that came with us. Our nurses are still there. Um, and, you know, I hope that uh, they, they're staying safe. And uh, to the, my ICU brethren throughout the country, they're taking this straight on. Amen. Thank you, all Dr. Right. George. Thank you so Thanks much. Thanks again, Doc. We are so fortunate to have uh, to have a foundation of doctors and nurses and medical health care workers and people even, you know, think about this, people in the hospital cleaning up the trash, delivering yeah. the food. We are we are so, so fortunate and we owe them everything. And and you know, it's like it's times like this when you realize how important they all are. So true. Let's take a quick break. Mm -hmm. We'll come right back. Stay with us.